I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. In my more than 30 years of work with the Lord, I've seen two types of Christians. The idealist or idealist, the real and the realist. And I found out that most of the idealists are usually very frustrated and mediocre in life. They put in a lot trying to please God, trying to maximize their lives, but usually they don't get much out of life. So I'm going to dwell on idealism, realism, and Christianity. What is idealism? Idealism is the desire for the ideal, the perfect state, the way things are supposed to be. Why realism is the insight into the facts on ground in any situation and the desire to work towards improving on the situation. There must be a desire to improve, to ameliorate, and to achieve a task. Most idealists are perfectionists and sometimes are deluded. They are deluded. Satan fell from heaven. He rebelled even when God was with him and he was the choir master. So even in heaven, there was war in heaven. Even Jesus Christ with his disciples, there was contention, there was rivalry, and there was a thief, and there was betrayal. Even Jesus himself was tired, and he slept deeply. And Jesus himself was hungry, and he looked at the fig tree. There, was no, there were no fruits in it. So these are some of the things that idealist Christians try to escape from. The resultant effect is that they live lives that are very frustrating and, and uh, unfulfilling. Uh, communism is an ideal state where every person has equal access to, to wealth and to the commonwealth. But in reality, it leads to lousiness and laziness and entitlement mentality. And it also creates an oligarchy, an elitist group later on. Now, let me give you an illustration. There is something I read. A professor was arguing with a student about communism and he wanted to demonstrate why communism does not bring out the best in people. So he gave them a test. I'm not quote using the exact figures. He gave them a test and some of them read very hard and got 90%. Some didn't read, they got 30%, 10%. And then he added all the marks together and divided the, 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 the total sum with the number of students. And so the average became 50 plus. Every person passed. But he told those who had 90 that you had 90. Those who had 10, you had 10, you had 30%. But now all of us have an average of 50 something percent we have all passed. And the communists felt that that is what we are saying. And then he gave them another test. The people who had 90 did not bother to read. They felt that whether they read or not, they would give them the average score. And those who had 10 and 30 said, if we don't read, those who had 90 will still read and will have 50 something. So why read? So every person did not read as much as they did before. And when the man added everything together, divided, average was 30% and they failed. And he told them that is how communism is. It's an ideal situation. All men are created equal. We have equal access to the world. But this is how communism is. And that's why many communist systems failed and that is why a lot of communist countries have a lot of deprivations and a few people obeying the iron law of the oligarchy control the world. 
So instead of pursuing the ideal, if the ideal is not available, make the best use of what is available. Now, most people who are idealists are very critical. They are critical, they are, they, they are deluded most times. And if it is among Christians, they are scripture quoting critical Christians, usually out of contact with reality. And they quote scriptures out of context and without insight. Now, they use scriptures as a backup for their lack of thinking ability. Scriptures are supposed to be analyzed based on the context and the circumstances and the generation where those scriptures were applied. I'll give you an example. When people talk about tight, 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 tight is the minimum. Tight, so that there might be food in the storehouse. What was the purpose of food in the storehouse? Is so that there will be no hungry persons, particularly amongst the priesthood. Today we pay tithes, and there are people who are still hungry. There are pastors who are poorly paid. There are pastors who are deprived. Even in the times of paying tithes, there was a, um, a prophet in the school of prophets who died poor in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. And Elisha faced reality. He did not pray for money to drop. He asked the woman, what have you of sale value in the house? There was anointing in the, pray, in the prophet, but there was ignorance. There was no desire to face reality. Elisha now came with anointing and the desire to face reality. And after facing reality, the oil expanded. He now took a step further. Go sell the oil pay your debts, and then live on the rest. The ability to live on the rest was now the responsibility of the woman. And that scripture changed my life. Instead of waiting for people to give to me, I always now thought about what is it of sale value that I had? What service will I render? And I did not need to depend on church and depend on members. Now, the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It is true that research has shown that SDA members, Seventh-day Adventist members in Canada and the United States and some other countries live longer than other Christians because they have the Sabbath rest, which is equivalent to 52 days holidays in every year. But also their diet matters. So, But Jesus healed on the Sabbath day and he questioned the idealism of those who did not want to face reality. He said, who amongst you will his sheep fall into a pit and will not pick it up on the Sabbath day? And that's how he questioned idealism in most cases, wanting them to face realism. So as a Christian and as any individual, if you want to live well, don't always argue and ask yourself, why is it that my case is not like the ideal? Everything I've written down here is capital letters so that I can read them, what I wrote. I'm facing reality and that my handwriting is not good. Why did I write down and why am I looking at the notes? I don't have a good memory. I'm facing reality, but these ideas came from me. And so I, I write with capital letters. I've read this thing once. I'm reading it again now. And if I'm to do an exam, I know that I don't have a good memory. I will not say da 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 and pray. No, I will pray so that I will be healthy, so that I won't fall sick, so that I will be able to concentrate during the exam, and the Holy Spirit will bring into my memory the things I have read. But I will read the subject matter over, over. Sometimes I read it up to nine times. Even when I want to preach, I go through my notes when I am seated, just before I'm called to preach. And I've gone through at home. Somebody seeing me might think that I didn't prepare before coming. No, I'm just letting myself know you are not as smart as people assume. You don't have a good memory. So read through again, master it before you speak. So the Bible says that the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. 
but he was speaking in a context of those who gave to Paul when Paul was not in need or in need. And because of what is credited to the account in heaven, Philippians chapter 4, read it from verse 17 down, before you start quoting verse 18. That is why the Lord will supply their needs. Because the Bible says that he who does not walk should not eat. Even though the Lord is Jehovah El Shaddai, he says that the poor will be with you always. It is true that all fingers are not equal, but you must choose not to be the one that is poor. Poverty is a fundamental human right in the Bible. The poor with you will be with you always, but wealth is an intentional creation. It's an intentional desire. Now, the Bible says, give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar and what belongs to God to God. That is facing reality. So Jesus Christ was a very realistic people, a person. But most of us who are Christians in Africa are deluded and that's why there is a lot of deception in Pentecostalism. He said, above all else, I wish that thou mayest be in good health, even, and, uh, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, not all Christians are in good health. Even in the Old Testament, Elisha, as anointed as he was, he died of the illness that killed him. So when, the sick, when Elisha was sick of the illness that killed him. So don't let any person delude you that because you are a Christian, by his stripes you were healed and that um, you don't need, uh, you should just be claiming the healing. No, you need to eat well, you need to rest well, you need to exercise, you need to immunize yourself and your children, you need to live in a conducive environment. He is Jehovah El Shaddai, but the Bible says he who does not walk should not eat. What I want to say now is that learn to live a balanced life. In marriage, there's no ideal marriage. We all have challenges. The Bible says in this world, you will have tribulation. The servant is not greater than his master. If I had tribulation, you will have challenges. So when you see all these posters, the battle is over. This and that, that, that. All your enemies will do this. Hope oh, they are just deleting you and giving you hope capital and you are not facing reality. Somebody will tell you between now and December, you will move into your own house. It doesn't happen like that. Frequently, it doesn't happen like that. When, I, when you share testimonies, somebody gave me a, 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 an SUV then, uh, gave me another this thing, somebody done. It doesn't happen like that. Always learn to face reality. I will face reality that I'm a black man. I will face reality that I'm a Nigerian. I will face reality that I'm from a minority tribe. And for me to reach my world and preach the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth, I need to put in my best and excel beyond discrimination. Learn to balance idealism and realism in Christianity and then you will be a kingdom citizen. Remember, uh, September 13th and 14th, I have um, a conference coming up, a webinar titled Sustainable Development in Life, Ministry, Business and Career. Send a message to plus 234 and I will send you the flyer. God bless you.